to bask Biarritz. You and your wallet willingly go splits where the Atlantic flows in starts and fits and spirits are spruced up with a line spritz and bikinis look best as two teeny bits. Glamour dazzles gaudy, doubled with glitz, and you are as pleased as anyone gets in a disco, gyring to a six, uh, 60s blitz of hot soul drawing which no cripple sits, while young girl moans and her paramour spits, his hands all over her pert, perky tits. And lovers groan until the starlight quits with manly peg cementing female slits or plumbing tongue strumming so many clits and sex acts mimic tragic comic skits and each bull snorts and each flighty quail flits and wild water flails whales losing its wits at the grand plage where each wave hits and hits and foams and froths the sand craters and pits, while the lighthouse beckons somber poets to unsheath unstilo as time permits, and scribble epics that croon like sonnets, the apprenticeship of Duddy Kravitz. At the casino cashing in her chits, spy B. Bardot, then those Kennedy shits, then pasty, slumming, sorbonne, lit crits. Some of them are twats, all of them are twits. Plus film stars fading, each one a ditz, confusing Australia and Ulster lit, leaving behind extreme close-ups of zits. Waistlines gone haywire, careers on the fritz. Make sure you quaff, Pelforth Brune never schlitz. Unlike Yanks and Yankee wannabe Brits, Canadians come with camouflage kits. Each murderer croons, each assassin knits, and Tories bid down with pinkos and grits. This poem recycles the beginning. It's when you jet on down to bask, be a Ritz. Thank you. Um, red is the coat de zero, the Black Sea, the Dead Sea. Red is goose stepping gulls and overstepping dogs. Red is a bloody shit. Red, a tongue accustomed to corruption, a grievous stallion unbridled in bed charges red. Red is an orangutan licking white snatch in the Rue Morgue. Red is a severe poppy, a severed neck. The purple prose, a blonde ejaculates in a blue movie sounds red. Red is the milky river, black with gangrene weeds brushing the surface. Red is Pushkin's statue in St. Petersburg, Russia, mobbed by Haligonian sparrows and pigeons. The invisible brilliance of hell defines red. Red is weather-beaten, worm-eaten stars. Red is black label, blue label, gold label, green label, red label. Piero Piccioni and Nio Morricone and Henry Mancini compose red. Red is Romania with plum blossoms and Greece with almond blossoms. See Red, starring the resplendent, elegantly sexy Helen Mirren. Red is a white lie illuminating a blackout. Red is a choir of hanged men. Red is the excellent scotch I have put away. Red is the orange free state, the yellow peril, the black dahlia. Red is La Cafe Soldat, 100% pure coffee from Zuaco, Mexico. Red is yellow knife, white horse, green gables, and red deer. An unconvincing black and a phony white appear red. Red's an asinine bull studying a pig-headed bitch. Red is April, Libra, Aquarius, and July. Red is 
Diamonds are forever for your eyes only, from Russia with love, because you only live twice. That library of burning books definitely in Texas blazes red. Red is film noir, it's yellow, and a black comedy performed in white face mime. Red is suicidal survival. Red is Tenzon Saki alcohol content 18% and a bottle wrapped in rice paper. Screening blue velvet and black September for green berets is awfully red. Red is flagrant flaming violet clansmen barbecued on a blazing cross. Red is a sun blighted fog, gold hair over a white shirt. To be transcendentally black is red. Red is a wriggling half crushed fly. Red is Duro's Rodos and its Rhodesian or lesbian nudes. Thinking only about the white gal's tight ass is red. Red is the white, red and blue, and the red, black and green. Red is Aboriginal and African and Chinese and Cuban and Nova Scotia. Red is Georgian root, illuminated versus Trudeau, long march, shining path, blues and bliss, I and I and red, poetry in the blood. Love elegy sonnet, a la manière de Pablo Neruda. Obliged to forget your olive waste, two breasts so gold the sun is golden turned, that shimmering imperium your sex, my cup culminates with blood crimson wine. I sin, I rot, I'm torn, my little heart. Done, not docile, you won't be coaxed, and so my dollar surges unmediated to gilded dawn, your beauty habits me. To you, I would be having, behaving, if you would be giving to me sheer down, and let my lilting tongue lay you guiltless. Please, don't aggrieve me further, let me plumb the parade of your flesh, its plumb fathoms, for Jasmine pursues you where you step. Uh, I'm going to um, finish up with this book called The Gospel of X. And, uh, well, you'll know what I'm talking about as I read. I'm sure my father is God, that God is my father. I was born of milk, not blood. I came to light outside my mother's flesh. Before an audience of dazzled cattle, attentive lambs, my legs kicked at the air. A newborn as ruddy as my mama's womb. Truly, I was as infallible as any infant. The man I call Pappy, this carpenter who can fashion no poem, hide us down to Egypt as half-caste outcasts, Jews, in a romance province. The stories told that a special star, a triangular moon like a diamond, blazing, directed our way, away from the blood-full belly of a satrap nervous of prophecies, who dispatched legions to hack to pieces a baby male population. Some old timers never hesitate to call my birth a curse one entailing the hurried, sudden massacre by provincial fiat of their boys, squalling infants and pissing toddlers. They whisper too that Pappy felt tricked by mom, that my paternity is suspect, but the white-haired midwives gossip all was set right, when somehow at my side a coconut palm just drooped down as my mother wept and gave Pappy its fat and milk. Among the Egyptians, those sepia and copper and ivory people, much was made of my yellow ochre complexion, gold plated like the sun, but also of Pappy's clay skin and lava blood, and of Mum, her eyes large with light, a pretty street Cleopatra, so sang the papyrus jongleur, those high maintenance poets. In Egypt, we were historic immigrants and potential penitents and converts, or so their antique priests dreamt. In our house of old wood, palm wine and music lit up our gaudy kinship. Yet, despite even fat bastard in the jug, Pappy was often moody. Neighbors whispered he was as gullible as a carpenter in a lawyer's office 
given his blatant betrayal by mom. Some nights, Pappy sat brown and stocky in her doorway, sat as huge as a side of beef sliced off in an abattoir, and both mom and me kept aloof as we watched him scrutinize stars and then study the dirt at his feet. When I turned 12, Pappy turned us back to Jerusalem, and I sat in ink-stained wooden desks, auditing preachers and philosophes, who were also perfect panderers and fakes. They spoke so lusciously they could almost sell a whore to God. Truly, they were poshly poetic, but their prayers rhymed finely with prophet, P-R-O-F-I-T. When I bandied scripture with them, reversing their hypotheses, hypocrisies with their own verses, I'd frighten the fuck out of them. And they'd holler, who the hell you think you are, an apprentice messiah? Pappy'd worry when these hyenas mod me, and so to please him, I became as awfully silent as God. When I reached 30, I put away my childish rectitude, my facile virtue, and put myself out to temptation. I drifted out into the desert. I stumbled over the dusty bodies of the Roman executed, rotting face down in the dirt, though the night's blackness was alive with throbbing stars. I envisioned incarnate that race of bliss women, and I was shaken. My cold, unshared bid had never worn to a punk out to skunk some spunk, or a lady eager to get right down and damn and decent, as the tavern poets recite, even though my buddy swore, you gotta wallow holy and smut, tap philosophy from the way an ass bobs and jumps. My mates prodded me to swive soon and often. Could I straddle Magdalena in silks, saddle her with kids, lay out cake and milk? Maybe I'd explore humdrum worries, tinker with minute household concerns, and die in well-earned decrepitude. But happy, boisterous, a magnum of wine at my elbow, grandbabies on my lap, Mary beside me, Mary as on our wedding eve, dining on bread that is sweet, drinking bastard that is subtle, in the desert, these visions tore at me. I decided to forge my own stride. I'd sourly brood and go about scattering sunlight, wisdom like melted butter and honey, and deliver the promise of fish to anxious hooks. And at that fiesta at Cana, I blushed water into wine. So perfumes acquired operatic pungency, and the usually hang dog moors plunged their faces into cups and everyone partayed so heartily, got so liquored up and fat with cake there was nothing to do but rise and stumble home. Back in Jerusalem, I bullwhipped bullshitters out the temple, and at every jaw's corner my question mark struck at naysayers like sickles scything down wheat. Multitudes thronged. I touched cripples and they tossed away canes and crutches. One dead guy, Lazarus, bro, to Mary de Magdala, danced right up out his grave, not only sprightly, but melodramatically 20 years younger. I eschewed adulation beside an audience. What preacher don't want a church? Soon I attracted disciples a dozen, and the crowds could have, with a nod from me and some miracle of charity, healing the dead, fattening the hungry, conceived themselves an army, and menaced the civic powers. I set a direction for poverty, and my nominal coterie and I went about virulently penniless, yet fame won us feasts and flowers. Those I saved from sick beds and cemeteries celebrated us with gold. Judas warned, worship is a prison. Tonight, wine drills me like a knife. Peter, that rough saint breaks a hunk of bread, handsome to stave off our allotted rotting. No faith is to be put in Judas who swears religion is poetry clarified as lie. He has his backers among the Pharisees, so politically brutal, 
personally dreary, physically dirty, and stylistically dull, but the price of their praise is his sullen, silvery treason. I go now to my garden danger, Gethsemane. When Rome's paid thugs, their swords glittering wildly in moonlight swarmed to imprison me, Peter plied in all business anger, locked one copper's ear, so a crimson rupture splattered a brother legionnaire who yelled, I said, don't let that motherfucker keep the sword. And you all let him keep his fucking sword. Shit, now look, my ear is completely fucked. I calmed the chaos, erased the blood squirting from the injured cop's head, repaired his ear. But Peter took advantage of the law and fled. It was one unsatisfactory victory. Once one for strutting, Peter turns now the stuttering saint. Verily, history is the sport of kings and the tragedy of subjects. The governor's city didn't wish to sign my death warrant, but the public bays for my heart, and he strives for comfortable popularity, so he supplied the provincial executioner, a fitting title, with three spikes and a cross. Bloody, bloody thorns compose my laurels. The spatter of soldiers spit, hollering torture mocks my earlier baptism. Fat toads on horseback lash me unerringly, laughing off their lawful abuse, potent insolence and injury. My blood torrents crazy scary. Obscenities arrive literally as stabs in the back. I witness face-to-face -face hatred theirs, suffer back-to-back -back whipping so goddamn undiplomatic, but I yield no oily hells to anoint my disabled majesty. Tragicomically, some of the very folks I doctored are gathered here now, hollering for my head. You'd think they traded in their clutches to help carpenter my crucifix. Now, under this gray tempered steel sky here in Golgotha, Sunk deep nails pierce and splinter my limbs. The winds go hoarse, crying despair and regret. Centurions gamble in open tents made of blankets. Scholars who always curse me as crazy stand before me jeering. Their words rise up like a mob of fists. Was I wrong? I thought I had to orate or else deteriorate. Post my voice to hold lies at bay. But my answers, my quizzes, my rebukes have urged on my extermination. Because I discredited ivory tower talk, the doctorates discard decorum and hurl at me jokes, stones, and garbage, a bunch of kiss my ass projectiles. A spear's jabbed in me, I don't care about the bleeding. A woman serves me staggering vinegar, a reversal and a validation of Kana. Now here's Poppy sabbing, sobbing, wondering why I don't just turn this cross into a chariot. And here's mom weeping, and there's Mary thinking I turned my back on her, on us, even though she used her hair to tell my feet, used her tears as oil. Yes, I'd like to strut, then droop with luxury, enjoy a gold leaf orgasm with Mary, plumb her no doubt honeying hips, share wine saturated cake, and make love filthier and filthier, louder and louder until the strophes, catastrophe of nectar. My destiny is to leave a bittersweet corpse, but omit any obit in favor of this gospel. Ah, God, my sweet God, my separation from all the world, this midnight darkened sun now in Mirrors a lover who eyes a girl but spies the bones beneath her skin. That visible mortality, refuting lust and lechery. Don't muse on doom, but know the grave fulfills its promise. Every eye is a ghost story. You explain yourself, but your presence and the moral is pain. Each and every origin is God. Genesis.
in repetition, Gehenna prophesied by Eden, the earth trembles and shudders, light sluices down black coals, the stars collapse like dominoes. Against this deep violet sky, I want to know I am before I become I was. The world creaks on in its bloody course. Nobody feels anything quite painless, actually. I would gladly trade places with the grave.